for another Melon Live. I'm excited. Glad to be back. Glad to talk about some new updates with Melon. Uh, had a great couple past weeks. I missed last week. I went on vacation with the family. So no live stream last week for me, but great time to kind of just, you know, recharge and rejuvenate. But I'm glad to be back. We got a lot of cool stuff going on with Melon. I feel like every time I do a show, um, we have a new update, which is great. This is what I love about this company. It's like we're always pushing. It's always something new rolling out. So it keeps it exciting, keeps it fun. There's always something new to learn. Um, and I've learned in this process so much of recording, becoming a better streamer, live streaming. So my job here is just kind of share the, that information with you guys today. And hopefully we all learn some good stuff. Um, so the last time, not last week, the last time uh, we had a show, uh, we were talking about uh, tips for generating content ideas. So if you ever feel like you're stuck, you don't know what kind of content to make, go back and watch that. I gave some really great uh, tips for coming up with a bunch of ideas that your target audience would really love um, while you're live streaming with Melon. Um, so I think that would be a great thing, always to kind of go touch up on and visit. Um, and for this week, we're going to talk about podcasting with Melon, um, which I know people think of Melon as like a live streaming app, but what led me into like this direction is from podcasting and using uh, apps like this and, and figuring out, okay, this is a better way to podcast rather than um, certain programs, nothing wrong with them, but they weren't built for podcasting. To me, Melon has a lot of great features that if you're a podcaster and you're looking to do like video clips, you're looking to, do, to interview people, uh, but not necessarily want to be in front of them um, or distance is a thing. Melon to me is the perfect alternative uh, for creating podcasts, getting guests on easily. So it's not a bunch of setup and also getting high quality clips and audio that you could kind of separate. So I'm going to go over how to do all of that, how to start a podcast, what you would need um, doing podcasts and Melon and then how to get the, the high quality files, what settings you need to know, what features that you could use in your podcasting journey, um, and then how to promote a little bit. Um, I'm always trying to talk about marketing a little bit, so I feel, felt like that would be a great thing to talk about. And if you have questions, please put them in the chat. I'm here um, to help. If I don't know, I will go find someone who knows the answer. Um, so yeah, we're all learning together. Please let me know where you're from. I would love to hear, um, you know, what you guys have going on. So, so podcast is basically audio conversations. To me, storytelling is what I think of when I think of podcasting. I think of, you know, it's like NPR, which is them telling a story about a crime or a mystery or something like that. Or you have uh, like podcasts, which is like more of a conversation. Um, but either way, podcasting for your brand, for your business, um, is a great way to kind of gather like attention, to reach new people, to network. Um, and then it just become, to me, it makes you more of an authority because if people are hearing your, your message and they resonate with you and they're listening to you for an hour, you feel like you're attached to this person. You feel like you know this person. So for me, podcasting is a great way to get to know people, for people to trust and like you. Um, and, and to understand who you are as a person and get your opinion. So podcasting is great for if you're a content creator, a business person, just a hobby. Pod, to me, podcasting all around is just a great thing to do. Um, I've always enjoyed podcasting. I've done, done it on and off for a while now, and it's always been fun. And you meet so many great people um, through podcasting. So that's what I love the most about it. Um, and like I said, brand awareness. Um, finding new listeners. Uh, if you sell a product or you have a website, it's great for traffic generation. Um, so those are all reasons that you would want a podcast. This is the benefits that you can get from podcasting. And to me, I think when people think of starting a podcast, they get overwhelmed. They think it's a lot of stuff that's going to be going on. But to me, Melon makes it super simple. Uh, the main thing with podcasts is you need a, a way to conversate and to record it clearly. Um, and separate files so you could kind of do more with it, um, which local recording in Melon to me is really great for it. So what it does is no matter the participants, everybody gets a separate audio file. And from that, 
from that separate audio file, you can cut, you can audit, uh, edit the audio is any way that you want to, to make the podcast uh, the best way that you want. And you also have the video file. So in case you want to do clips um, for TikTok stories, always a great um, tool to use. So I really enjoyed the local recording. Uh, Keystone Tech Reviews, how are you doing today? I just got it. I got this week. How do you like Melon? Let me know. If you have any questions, also, please let us know. We're here to help. This is what we're here for. If there's any content you would like to see in the future, please let me know. I'm really enjoying Melon so far uh, since I've been here. And just the innovation, man. <laughs> the innovation has been it's been great. Uh, I have We have a new feature that just rolled out. It's the portrait mode streaming. So if you want to do streaming to TikTok or any uh, platform that's more mobile-based, um, you could do it using the custom um, R RTMP. Also, if you want to just record in Melon, in that TikTok, when I say TikTok, the 9 by 16 that frame, uh, say you just want to make content, you just want to record, talk, or interview and have a conversation like we're talking about doing a podcast. If you want to pre-do it, if you know that you're not going to put it on YouTube or you want to just put it on TikTok, you could easily go into the portrait mode, create content, record it in Melon, and then just upload it. Um, so I'm really excited about the portrait mode. I know that's something that people are, are really looking forward uh, to, especially like streaming to more mobile platforms. Um, so I'll go over some more details uh, in a little bit about portrait mode, but I'm really excited about that. I know a lot of people have been asking about that. So I'm excited to see what everybody starts doing within how they use this feature. So back to podcasting. So it seems like it could be overwhelming starting a podcast. It's, it could seem like it's so many, uh, you know, pieces to to put together. But what you need is a recording app, which would be Melon. Um, that way you could talk to someone. You could interact with other people. You could record and you could live stream. To me, that's the it's combining a bunch of things that you would need in one. Um, a great mic is important. Um, and I'm going to go over a couple that I think are great. We have a blog that details uh, all the best mics in high detail. So we have, a, you know, if you want to go check that out in super detail, go to melonapp.com and go to our blogs. And we have a blog for the microphones, cameras, best monitors. Um, but the ones that I would recommend right now, so it's going to be two types. It's going to be XLR mics and then it's going to be USB mics. To me, USB mics over the years have improved and improved and they're getting better and better. Um, XLR is more like traditional mics, where it's like a cord in the back. Now, sorry, I hope there's no static, but if you can see, I have this connected to XLR. This is the Shure M7. This is like a podcast standard. Um, a lot of people you'll see in podcasts use this one. Um, so I'm fairly new to it, so I I can't give you too many tips on it. I'm still learning, still working with it, but so far a great, great mic. Another alternative is the Blue Company. They make a lot of great USB mics. They got the Yeti caster. They have the Yeti um, for just like if you want something really affordable, they have the Snowball, which is great. I have a bunch of them around the house just for creating content. Um, so a great mic is important. And in understanding the positioning of the mics, um, because certain mics have different positioning. Some mics are meant to sit in the middle of the room. So if there's a group of people, um, some mics are meant to be right in front. Some people, you know, it's some mics are meant from to hang down like almost like a studio mic. So understanding which kind of mic you have and the positioning for it is going to be key to getting really high quality audio. But once you have that set up, the main part of doing a podcast is pretty much done. Um, I, I would say go back to episode one. We talked about making a stream plan that will help because then you will understand, you know, what direction you want to go to with your podcast and have kind of a format. And it's, it's so much easier to talk and to interact with somebody when you have you know, when you have a format. Cyborg, cyborg for life. Welcome, welcome. How are you doing today? He says the mic sounds crispy. Oh, thank you. Yes, I I'm this short mic is pretty good. They got it for me for my setup, um, and I love it. I love how you can set it up with your computer too, and you could change the settings within. So if it's more far away. Um, you can adjust it so it sounds better that way. If you want it closer up on you and you want it to be in the shot, you can adjust it towards that. Um, and I enjoy that it's actual like digital buttons on the actual mic that you can adjust. So I feel like it's a good balance between 
analog and digital. And this one is the Shure M7. And then also I would recommend the Blue Yeti Caster. Those are the two that I would recommend. Blue makes really good stuff. I have a lot of their stuff. Um, so I would check those out too. So once we have our mic set up, we know we're going to record in Melon. We know we're going to invite our guests in Melon. Um, and we're going to have a conversation with them about our podcast. Um, you have to decide what kind of podcast do you want to do. You could do interviews. Um, you could do a panel. Uh, you could do something like educational. You could do a storytelling. Um, and that's up to you. It's pros and cons to, I don't want to say cons. It's not really content, <laughs> any of those, besides just you know having to put in some work and research. But uh, it's no con to it. But the pros for each of them are a little bit different. But to me, it's great to kind of do a little bit of each because certain uh, content resonates with people differently. Some people are more educational type people. Some people are more storytelling type. You know, some people love interviews like me. I always enjoy interviews and listening to other people talk about their experiences. So you just have to find what matches up to your target audience and, you know, what resonates to your core. But all of these are great options. You could do solo shows, which is kind of like what I'm doing now. It's kind of like I'm doing a podcast about live streaming. Um, so just picking your type and understanding. I will say with interviews, the great thing of that is that you're always networking and you're reaching a new audience. Um, the one thing I'm looking forward to in the future is interviewing people from the community, um, from the Mellon community. Um, Cause it's a lot of, I, I say it every time, but it's a lot of very smart users in the Mellon community that I learn a lot from myself and, and always picking up little stuff like, Oh wow. Okay. This is how you're using it. So I would love to interview some of those guys and, uh, and ladies and, and get a different perspective and possibly pick up more stuff and learn more stuff from a different perspective. Um, so that's something that I'm looking forward to doing, but with interviews, you're growing your audience. Uh, you're getting in front of that person's audience and they're getting in front of your audience. So to me, for growth, interviews are great, great networking tool, great way to kind of get in the room. And you would be so surprised at how many people would accept your interview, how many people will talk to you because a lot of people want press. A lot of people want stuff to post. They need content to post, right? And nothing shows like, oh, I'm working authority, like being on podcast and showing that you're doing like, uh, you know, content that's like educational or helping someone. To me, that adds to your brand. And it's a very great way to network out. And you'd be very surprised. Like, I've gotten some really good guests doing podcasts that I didn't think I would get. But just the fact that they saw I was making content, I was putting myself out there, I was able to reach a bunch of different people. And then now from there, we have that relationship for life. So it's always good to network across, network up. Just try to get people that you find interesting, even your family. You know, it's the conversation, it's the story that's going to drive it. So once you have your podcast, um, and, and please, if I'm going too fast, you got questions, let me know in the chat. I'm here um, to answer anything. Cyborg for Life says, yeah, I do interviews. What type of interviews? What kind of content do you make? I would love to check out what you're doing. I, I'm, I love interviews. Like <laughs> pretty much all the podcasts I listen to are interviews about e-commerce, marketing, or just normal conversations. It's just about random stuff. But that's like pretty much my day. It's working, listening to podcasts, audiobooks. Um, so it's a good lane to be in. So once you uh, you have your podcast, you can trim it and you can upload it. Um, it's a bunch of pre, uh, free software that you can actually trim and edit the audio. Um, Audacity is one that's been around forever. Um, great tool and a lot of people use it for podcasting. You can normalize, do all the basic audio stuff that you would need. Um, their uploader uh, programs or SaaS uh, software that you can use to distribute your podcast, like Anchor is one, uh, Lispin. Um, so those are how you di distribute the podcast once you've recorded in Melon. Um, and, in, and the great thing, too, is if you just want the audio, you could take that from uh, local recording. If you want to 
broadcast whatever you're doing it to multiple places at the same time you could do that through the multi-streaming if you don't want to live stream at all you just want to record in melon you could just press the record button and no one else has to see it so you can kind of control the way that your podcast goes because some people don't does don't like to be live while they do podcasts but to me i enjoy the live aspect i like the chat giving answers and responses because i feel like it adds to the conversation so depending on what kind of person you are, that's what I would go for. C. Uh, Cyborg for Life says, I talk about orthopedic doctors and patients and their experience. Oh, that's cool. Wow. Okay. Okay. And you use, he says, I use Anchor. Anchor is pretty good. I've heard good stuff about Anchor. So uh, we could technically use Zoom to Melon. How does that work? Um, does it allow chat highlights? The chat highlight, I will check for you to be positive. Um, but the great thing with Melon is that you could use it with Zoom so many different ways. Either you could use it as a replacement, because kind of how I use it is like for meetings. Um, I use it for just day-to-day -day conversations and podcasts. But say if, if it's something that you wanted to do, you could use the camera from Zoom or the features from Zoom and import it in to Melon using custom RTMP. Um, so it's different options. And I'll pull up some blogs and step-by-step -step guides that we have, and I'll send those to you. So that way you could, you could get a better view. Because um, I feel like me explaining it over the live, I'm probably not going to do the best job. But you seeing the pictures and, and the screenshots, I feel like would do you justice. It would do a lot better. So I'll get that for you. Oh, let me screenshot that for you it's my little method of keeping up cool and please if you got questions let me know in the chat and let me know where you're from i'm currently in atlanta georgia right now it is burning up hot um <laughs> i'm trying to do better about going outside and fitness and exercise but it's, it's so hot that it's like every time i'm like let me go right back inside um, but I'm enjoying it. Could be, could be cold. It could be worse. I'm not a, a big cold person. So, you know, could be worse. Philadelphia. Okay. Never been to Philly. I, I definitely want to go. Baltimore, myself, <laughs> not getting that hot. The DMV. So, okay. With podcasts, um, oh, and a lot of times, what you will get is an mp3 file um to me mp3s are great because they're lightweight uh everything pretty much plays mp3s um they're not the best when you think of the hierarchy hierarchy of audio flack i don't know if you guys have ever heard a flack file it's beautiful it's like an orchestra against your ears but the the files are like four gigs per audio so it, it doesn't it is it's not a big deal Wave is to me is in between. It's a bigger file size, but the quality is better. And then MP3 to me is the most accessible. But the thing about it, most consumers cannot tell the difference between MP3 and Wave. To me, in my personal opinion, most unless you're into audio, unless you're into studio stuff, most people cannot tell. And to me, the difference between MP3 is it's easier to upload, it's easier to deal with, and it saves a lot of space. Um, so to me, that's why, and you could get some really high quality MP3s. Like when you think about the music that you're listening to, you think about most podcasts, they're MP3s. Um, so a lot of it just comes with EQing, understanding, you know, just little audio stuff. You don't have to be a, a audio engineer for any of this, but a lot of it is just taking off the low end of your, your audio, making sure that it's not picking up the desk. Like when you're rumbling around and hitting the desk, little stuff like that will make, go a long way with your audio, with your podcast. Um, and then what I do is after each uh, stream, I download the local recording. So I'll download the, and I upload it to whatever I use for storage, whether it's Dropbox, Google Drive, whatever you use to store stuff. I, I just do it afterwards because for me, if I don't do it, then I'm going to forget. Um, you in Melon, it saves your files. I believe for a standard it's 15 days. And if you have a pro it's 30. So you could go back and get those files afterwards. But for me, just for the flow of things, I like to, as soon as I finish, let's download, let me put it in a folder, let's upload that, I have it. So now if I wanna outsource 
the podcast editing, I could do it that way. If I want to edit it, I always have those files um, with me so I could just, you know, make any changes, do what I want to with that content. So that's how I like to think about it and just kind of keep my workflow smooth. Philly is awesome. I, I believe it. And y'all have great sports fans. <laughs> like 76ers fans are awesome. I love it. Y'all dedicated. Um, have you heard about Spotify's new video podcast style? I'm I seen it like with Joe Rogan's podcast. I start seeing it like roll out, and I feel like video podcasts are gonna progressively keep getting bigger and bigger. And that's why I think Melon is gonna be such a strong player in that spot because we make it so easy to go live and it's so easy to kind of start a podcast and get the files and have that high quality. I think more people, once they start catching on to doing more video uh, podcasts, people are going to start really, really using this more towards podcasting. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for it. I, I think video podcasting is really just at the beginning, um, especially with our new portrait mode where you can actually make the content in that nine by 16 TikTok. I call it the TikTok style because that's what most people associate it with. But uh, that that format, you can now just stream in that format or record in that format. Um, so for content creation, it just keeps getting better. We keep keep coming up with new stuff. So I think, you know, it's going to be great. And I'm excited to see what Spotify does with the new features. Um, see, that portrait mode is fire. Thank you. I, I, I was, when I saw it, I was on vacation for a couple of days and I came back and they were working and I was like, oh, wow, this is, <laughs> this is great. So, yeah, I'm excited about it, too. I'm excited to use it more and actually create some content with it. I've been meaning to create some TikToks and do more content. Um, and I think it would be a great way just to make easy TikToks and YouTube shorts this way. Because um, sometimes I just like to turn on the camera and kind of ramble and talk and then cut it up afterwards. And and sometimes to me with the, the TikTok camera or editor or like using your phone, I overthink it because it's a lot of steps in it. Not a lot of steps, but it's a lot of record, stop, record, stop. So to me, this is a much easier way to do this. And I, I'm excited about the, the new features we got coming out past this and this one. Uh, yeah, I love Melon. It's only getting better. No, I appreciate it. Yes, I, I will make sure I tell the team. Um, but yeah, they, they, they've been working hard. A lot of smart people on the team and always coming up with new stuff. Uh, Harrison Family Values. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How is your day going? Where are you located? So now we've talked about creating the podcast with Melon. We talked about editing. We talked about what mics to use, what equipment you, you uh, to use. So now it's about promotion. And then everybody's favorite topic is monetization. How do you make money from it? How do you, you know, profit? Because Anything to me that you have to invest in and take time out for, you should make something back for it. Um, whether it's like social currency of growing your 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 followers and viewers, or is actual currency, you know, or turning that social currency into actual currency. To me, you should reward yourself for for you know working hard and get something back for it. Now, I'm not saying that only stream for money and do all that, but you know. Try to make it a business when you can. And to me, I really, one of the key features of how I even discovered what Melon was and like me searching and like looking up was the donations. Because when I was podcasting, it would be weird to do like, it was no other way other than super chats to get donations or people would try to take a huge percentage. So when I realized that with Melon, they don't take, there's a hundred percent goes to the creator. So when you can use it, it's a Streamlabs donation app that you can integrate with Melon. It's super easy to set up. And so if anybody donates, you get 100%, which is great for the creator. Um, and it just it's it gives a different way for people to show support. Because a lot of times people want to support. People want to show support and donate money towards your podcast if they see you working and see you giving great content. Um, so this makes it easy. And I feel like it's not like a hard setup at all. You could do it in literally two or three minutes. Um, so if you don't have that turn on, make sure you check that out. Um, and it's over here on the actual, on your settings, you can get access to it on the right hand side. Um, but yeah, try, look into that, uh, the cloud bot, look into the donation widgets.
but all of those are very great. See, I didn't know that. I got a donation last lot uh, night last uh, live stream. Oh, great! I love it. I love to see it. Those donations. It's nothing like getting a donation. Like that feeling is a, a great feeling. <laughs> uh ralphie here from florida welcome welcome nyc area nyc welcome been using melon for over a year now love this platform thank you for using melon thank you we appreciate it and we appreciate everybody's feedback we appreciate the the suggestions um as you see we we're we're very heavy on listening to suggestions and like trying to improve um that's why we always got new updates coming out so please if y'all have questions uh, features, let us know. Um, I'm always in a community, like checking to see what people are responding. If you're in the Facebook community, it's me that's probably uh, you're talking to. If you're on Twitter, it's probably me that you're talking to. So feel free to reach out um, and let us know. We're here to help. And if you haven't, please join the Facebook community. Um, like I said, it's a lot of great people and smart people, not just that work at Mellon, but like just power users who really understand content creation and they're doing really cool stuff with Mellon. So if you want to learn more about live streaming, great place to be. Um, and then other ways that you can monetize your podcast advertisements. So if you'll see a lot of times with podcasts, they'll, they'll do ad roles and, uh, promoting other products. You could promote your own product. Um, you could do sponsorships. Um, you could do premium content, like almost like a behind a paywall. So it's like you could record an extra podcast and you only get access if you pay $5 monthly to get these extra bonus episodes. So it's different ways that you could take your content and monetize it and, and present it to your audience. Um, but I think the main thing is just providing value for what the audience wants. So whether it's uh, entertainment or it's education, um, that's the main thing. Let's we'll see. The Facebook group is great. The admin response uh, fast and big help. I appreciate it. And yes, the, the community is great. Like I, I really enjoy talking with everybody who uses Melon and just seeing like there's just so many just different variations of like, man, I didn't people using it for piano lessons, people using it for a church, people using it for, you know, it's just cool seeing like, oh, we're all using the same product with so many different variations and different ideas of how you could use the same features and it's just cool to me i i enjoy seeing stuff like that different design layouts how people can come up with creative ways to you know put their personality with their live stream um so that's something i've been learning a lot about just since i've been here which has been really cool um i'll be doing tech my tech lives on it oh great i let me know what, what's some new tech that i should be looking out for please let me know i'm a i'm a gadget person I just bought an Oculus. I almost broke my hand trying to box in VR, not paying attention. Um, <laughs> so, no, so don't be like me. But if you know any good tech stuff that uh, you would recommend, please let me know. Uh, when are you going to add mirror text for the teleprompter feature? Uh, those who are already using the teleprompter when live streaming. I can't say exactly, but I do know that the teleprompter has been brought up for updates and they're working on some cool stuff. Um, so I can't give you a guarantee of what, when, but I know it's a lot of cool new features on the horizon. Um, and I'll, after the show, I'll double check. I'll make sure that I suggest this again, but I know that it's in there because I've seen it. Um, but yeah, that's a great question though. And I'll make sure I bring that up again. And please, again, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm here to help. I'm enjoying these questions. I'm just hanging out. Samsung Galaxy 22 and Fold phones. Okay, I'm gonna check them out. Check them out. I'm I'm super for the tech live streams. So you're talking my language. Um, and again, and just pie. I'm gonna wrap up um, talking about podcasting. I feel like we've covered like pretty much how to start, what equipment you would need, um, just some tips, schedule. Uh, and start a schedule and Melon, you could schedule your live stream. So if you'll see on like YouTube or Facebook it's saying Melon has scheduled this, what I'm doing is I'm going in the studio. If you go over to the right hand side, you'll see a calendar and then you could go in there, pick the time. So I schedule that. So that way the audience is aware of what's going on. They know that the stream is coming and they can, you know, be aware. So if you're doing a podcast, schedule it ahead of time, 
or if you're releasing it, just release it on a schedule so people can kind of be consistent and they understand when it's coming. Um, again, it's a great way to network. So don't be afraid to reach out to different people, email different people, show them what you're doing, show them what you're working on with your live streams and your podcast, ask them to be on there. Um, Cause you'll be surprised. A lot of people want to be on podcasts. A lot of people want to speak and, and tell their message. So reach out. Don't be afraid. Um, and you'll be surprised. And please, if y'all get some great guests on there, let me put it in the chat so we can, <laughs> so we'll be on, be, the whole team will start watching the streams and the podcast. Um, and then you can even start a channel around clips that you do from your podcast, which you'll see a lot of people uh, do like uh, Logan Paul. He has a, a podcast and I always see his clips in my, my feed. Um, but it's a separate channel that I'm not subscribed to, but I think it just, whatever you follow, it's suggesting, you know, from the algorithm. Um, but you'll see a lot of podcasts do that. They have their main channels, but then they have a clip channel that just only super short clips of the podcast. Joe Rogan does it. Um, so that's a great way that you can make other channels, make other revenue, but off the same form of content, if that makes sense. Um, and then repurpose uh, on other social media contents. Of course, when you go live you could oh, with Melon, you can just uh, go to different places like YouTube, Twitch, uh, Twitter. You can stream to different places, but I would take that and still cut up the highlights and and then repurpose that. To me, it's easier to, to promote a single than it is an album. Um, give me a wrench so I could give you my email. Okay, one second. Okay, cool. You think the YouTube algorithm picks up on regular schedule? Um, how how tight is it? Do you think? I don't know necessarily for the YouTube algorithm if it's more about schedule, I, but I do know consistency is great. I don't know if it's the exact same time, but I know that they they push for when you're consistently pushing content. The more you're putting, because that's what they're in business for. They're trying to sell ad space on your content, right? So they are looking for high quality content to put in front of people so they can serve more ads. So it's your job is to make the content that they would want. That's the way I try to look at it. It's like, my job is to make the content that will serve ads very well. Um, and then to me, it's more about the audience, I think. Um, I think the audience, it's easier to know like, oh, if Friday at one o'clock that this is gonna, happen it's easier to promote and people start becoming used to it like oh this is my time that i need to do here i need to show up and listen to this podcast or this live stream so to me i think more of on the promotion side it's better i can't say 100 percent on that the youtube al algorithm side but i would assume that it would um just you know any the more content and the more consistent you are the more it's going to try to reward you for your content that's what I would, I assume. Um, so yeah, and if y'all have any other questions, please let me know. Um, and just to recap, we talked about why you should podcast, the benefits. We talked about what hardware, which mics. And again, we got blogs on the best mics, the, the best lighting. Um, and as you see, taking some of the advice, listening to it, using some of the stuff from the actual blogs. Um, so if you need help with that, please let us know. Um, the different types of podcasts, um, the different formats you could do, and then just how to use Melon to, to record your podcast, invite your guests, bring them in there, how to edit and upload, and then how to monetize. Um, next week, I'm excited. I got it's so many new features. I got to pick one to like really plan out. Oh, let's, let's show you guys the new uh, portrait mode before we go. So, so portrait mode streaming, I'm really excited about. It's super easy to turn on. So when you, if you, I know it's a little bit small here, but you can see right here, this little phone right here. If you click this, this turns on a portrait mode streaming and it'll give you this nine by 16, almost Instagram feed. And the cool thing about this, which I didn't know at the time, so you can add, just like uh, normal with Melon, you could add up to 11 more people, including yourself. You could share the screen in this mode. And it looks great. It, it's dynamic. It, it resizes. 
with uh, with the stream, depending on how many people. Um, so I was really impressed by how well it worked. Um, again, I was on vacation, so I missed a lot of the building and, and <laughs> knowing that this was coming. So when I came back, I was like, wow, this is really great. Um, and we had a lot of calls using it. And it just really cool. So I, I really uh, appreciate how great that came out. Um, Cyborg for Life says, for portrait mode, can you just record it and not live stream it? Yes, you can. So just like how Melon Studio, everything works the exact same. So you can go in there, you can only record um, and then just download your recording and do it like that. And that's kind of how I plan on using it a lot also, just to make content. Come in here, talk, do tutorials, but I, I'm aiming for the TikTok YouTube short reel style. So this will cut down a lot of editing for me of having to resize and make sure the camera, you know, zooming in and out and cropping to make sure it fits. To me, all you got to do is turn this on. It's already there. Just the camera to make sure you're in good space and it's going right ahead. Um, so that's what I really like about it. And here's the example in studio, what it looks like. And then here's the example on Facebook. So I think it's really good. If you try it out, please let us know in the community. Let us know on Twitter. Let us know on Facebook what you think about it. Um, I'm really excited to see what people do with this. I think this is really going to be one of the, the features that make Melon stand out from the competitors because, uh, as you know, like short form content and mobile content is more and more, you know, it's, it's growing and growing every year. It progressively gets more about mobile stuff. So Melon being, you know, on the forefront and like giving you easy access to do that to me is great. So I really want to see you guys, what you guys come up with. Um, and let me know next week. I'll come up with some cool stuff. If you guys want to see anything, um, please let me know in the chat. Let me know in the community. I'm here to help. I could take this off screen now. But yeah, please check out Portrait Mode. I'm excited. And, I, and some more cool stuff is coming. <laughs> that I can't wait to, to show you guys and talk about. Um, hmm, maybe I'll do some content about, I'll, I'll, I'll think of some cool stuff about portrait mode and, uh, you know, using it for short form content, using Melon and different stuff. I think that'll be cool. I got so many things that I can make content about. The microphones, cameras. So I'm excited. We're going to be here each and every week. Um, and I'm excited, man. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. I'm going to get off here in just a second. If not, um, and thanks for coming and hanging with me. It's been fun. I feel like I'm getting better at doing this live stream. First couple of times, I'm going to admit I was very nervous. Um, but you guys have been super welcoming, super cool. Um, and, you know, so it's been great. I've been really enjoying this. Um, so I'm excited to keep doing this, keep trying to teach different things. Um, yeah. So. I'm going to get off here, guys. I hope you have a great weekend. Please use portrait mode. I'm excited to see it. I'm going to be on here this weekend using it, making content. Um, so if you do make some content with it, please tag us, Twitter, uh, Melon App, uh, on Facebook in the community, on uh, LinkedIn. We're all over there. Please tag us. And then I'm going to work on doing some giveaways for some merch. I'm going to see about... Um, maybe doing some shirt giveaways or coffee mugs. I'm going to see what I can do and best ways to run it. But be on the lookout for that. I think it'd be a great way to do that. Um, so thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it. Go try Melon. If you haven't, free, free to sign up. Pro has much more features, but the, the free one is great. Um, tell a friend, um, jump on a call, and let's make some content. So y'all have a good week. Enjoy your time. I will be back next week. Enjoy.